I was watching a TV show the other day, and this man cheated on his wife, and the most annoying part of the whole story was the fact that he mentioned it was a mistake. For a mistake is something we do accidentally trying to do something good, and it's something that we do without intention or willing it. In real life, people forgive mistakes quite easily because they know by common sense the person was intending to do something different than what they did. For example, when a waiter kind of spills a drink on you or, or maybe screws up an order, these things are usually easily forgivable because we understand people make mistakes. But sin is different in kind and species. Is where a person has full knowledge and consents to an act which is contrary to truth, right reason, or right conscience. This is why sin hurts other people. And it is sometimes considered a mortal sin, especially an act of adultery, because it spiritually kills the relationship that kind of once existed, and it causes a real wound that festers because we know it wasn't a mistake. This is why the church makes a distinction between sins that are mortal and sins that are venial or smaller sins that don't ruin the relationship. Some sins and actions are more serious, and they can cut oneself off from their relationship with the living God and with their neighbor. And it always first happens against God, because God's holding all things in existence. And when we think properly about sin that offends God directly, it offends Him because of His goodness and His holiness, but it's this infinite offense. And this is why it's a mortal sin. And this is why Christ needed to come to repair sin. It's not, sin's not simply something against your neighbor, it's, it's, it's against the living God. And Christ came to repair that particular sin, and this is what happens with reconciliation. And this is what all the sacraments do, they reconcile us back to the living God. And all the sacraments do this, they reconcile us with God and, and give us peace of soul and mind. And even if we committed the worst sins, the mercy of God is available, and it's important for us to confess them, to confront ourselves, and not run from ourselves, or suppress our sins dwelling in our hearts. For the demons do not want you to experience God's mercy in the sacrament of confession, or to grow in grace and holiness by letting sins die in God's mercy. For if we do not confess them, they remain attached to our souls, neither absolved nor released. And in one sense, they are tied to us, and they are like a burden we carry. And if we're uh, not spiritually aware, we don't know why we feel like we're carrying something. We don't even realize it's our sins weighing us down. We can so be so spiritually blind. And if or when grace awakens our soul to our reality of our sins, there's this good advice on how to act. And one author says this, I should never wallow in guilt in a self-absorbed way. It is unchristian to think of my sins apart from God's mercy. And this is part of the reason for confession. Our sins are not meant to be concealed in our hearts and kept there while we waste away, but rather poured out to be reconciled with God and his church, in order that I see my sins in a new light and understand them in the Lord's mercy. That the mercy of God reaches my bones and my interior life to revive my soul, which may have died because of sin. For when it comes to sin, we know we didn't make a mistake, but we sinned with deliberate and conscience consent. And when truth confronts us, we have two options. Either we can repent with a human heart that feels or not, and harden our heart, thinking we are above God's law, and that somehow society has progressed past the eternal law of God, written on the human heart, where deep down we know it's true. 
There was a person who was recording history who mocked religion, heaven, purgatory, and hell. And when he was about to die, he called for a priest. And his, and his friend said to him, he said, I thought you didn't believe in all that religious stuff. And he said these profound words. He said, my tongue was lying to my heart, right? The law of God's written on every human heart. So if you sin, don't lie to your heart with your tongue. But confess and seek God's grace to learn evermore in your heart where all sin begins and how to die to this or that sin and live for God. For this is the long life endeavor of every holy man or woman who knows sanctity does not come easy or by our power alone, but with grace upon grace received through the sacramental life. 